Hey guys, in this video lesson, we are continuing our SEO workshop by tackling content relevance. I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to be taking when you are posting content on your website and to modify and optimize your existing content so that it is as relevant as possible within the eyes of Google. There are a few key things that we need to do for every post within our keywords, our metadata, our descriptions, everything so that we are ranking as much as possible. So let me show you what is involved, okay? We're going to be going through all of these different things one at a time inside of a post that I've set up in my website. The first thing is the URL. What is the actual destination that your post has been given as an address? So for instance, if I view this post right here, the URL is Sanctuary Gardens Kelowna Wedding Venue Spotlight. Now that's a little wordy and maybe a little bit spammy looking. However, it does have my keyword in it, which is Sanctuary Gardens Kelowna and would also possibly rank for Kelowna Wedding Venue Spotlight. So that is the URL, and you want to make sure that you're intentional about that. We do not want something like this. Um, Bill and Ebony, that kind of a URL. That doesn't do anything for Google, so make sure you have specific URLs set up. Heading tags is another important part of our content relevance. That is the large text throughout your post. So different text has different tags in it to tell Google how important it is. So titles and headings are typically the most important key ideas within a post. So Google gives more weight to what those say. Moving on, content topic. So whether your topic obviously is in line with what is being searched makes a big difference. So Google does look at all the text overall to get a gauge of what is being covered post tags and that is I believe I have my tags here visible but let's just pull up this this guy right here so tags that you would add to your individual posts this is in WordPress of course if you're in Squarespace Wix something like that it's going to look slightly different but the ideas are all the same keywords and variations those are the main um, words that you've specified as being important in your post so when you are optimizing your posts you can actually enter in within each page and post in your website what you want Google to see that page is about. So for instance, we can enter in our description and our title and our focus key phrase. That's our keyword. So this would be, or in our earlier example, it would be Sanctuary Gardens Wedding or Sanctuary Gardens Kelowna for this particular post right here. Uh, let's see, where were we? Keywords and variations of that. So for instance, your main keyword might be Sanctuary Gardens Wedding, but in other parts of your topic or post, you might have Sanctuary Wedding at Sanctuary Gardens, Kelowna Venues, such as the Gardens at Sanctuary. You see just different variations of the same different keyword. Google can now intelligently look through and tell if you're kind of repeating the same keyword too much. So you want to have variations of what your keyword is. And keyword frequency, how often that word or topic is mentioned in your post. Google weighs how relevant it is to that particular subject. Image alt tags, that is the metadata behind each image in your post. So for instance, this picture of a teapot. Google can look at this and it can look at the information inside of it. So the file name and what is known as the alt text of that image. But what they can't do, because it's a computer program, it doesn't look at this photo the way we do and say, oh, that's a teapot. Those are two little red teacups. That's some tea right there. No, it's only going to do that if we've written in here. So we would go red teapot with teacups at Chinese wedding ceremony, right? And then Google would say, oh, that's a picture of a red teapot with teacups at a Chinese wedding ceremony. And so it might rank for that particular keyword, especially in Google image search. So for instance, if we go to um, Sanctuary Gardens Kelowna, and I search in my images, you'll see that different photographers have uploaded photos of Sanctuary Gardens, some of which are actually off of our website. And that's because in our image alt tag, we tag this as a photo taken at Sanctuary Gardens, and therefore now we are linked to. Great. So moving on, we have the post title. That one's pretty obvious. What you title your page as matters to Google a lot. And meta description, we kind of touched on that very briefly. In here at the very bottom, when we have our SEO information, we can enter in a short description. And when you actually search for something, such as Sanctuary Gardens in Google, you see how these different results come up and they each have a little description underneath? That is what your metadata is, your description here. Okay, so let's go through and let's optimize a post. I have created a post right here 
and right now it is not set up to be SEO friendly. So we're going to walk through some common mistakes you want to avoid and together we are going to make this post awesome in the eyes of Google. So let's get started right at the top with our title. At the top here I've titled it Sneak Peek Curtis and Ashley and this is bad. And the reason for that is because Google has no idea what this post is about. I know that it's Curtis and Ashley who got married. I know that this is a wedding, but nowhere in this post title does it have wedding listed. Nowhere in this post title does it have the venue, which was at, I think, Black Bear in Naramata. So what I would do rather than sneak peek Curtis and Ashley, I would have whatever keyword I want to rank for, which for weddings is typically the venue because a bride is going to search for Black Bear Naramata and I want my post to hopefully pop up on that search result. So I would start with the keyword I want to rank for. And then I would do something like this, Curtis and Ashley. And actually it's not Black Bear, it's Gristmill. At Gristmill. So that would be my post title. Now it is better. Second, we've got a description here that I've added at the top, and there are a few issues with this. The first is that, as we read through it, Curtis and Ashley were the absolute bomb to hang out with and photograph. We had the best time capturing their wedding. Okay, so this is great, but nowhere in here do we have the venue, mess, venue mention, no locations, no details, no specifics, and no keywords. So keywords that we would want if I'm trying to rank for Grist Mill Naramata. I would want to have Chris Mill, obviously. I'd want to have Naramata Wedding. I'd want to have kind of the region or the nearby cities. So let's say Okanagan Wedding. Um, maybe I would want to have Chris Mill Naramata. Or you, you get the point, just different keywords that will actually tie in. So we've got a forest wedding, we could put that in there. We could do wedding photos on the lake. Just think of terms that brides are searching for when they're researching weddings and planning out their wedding if you are a wedding photographer. And whether you're a photographer, a kayaker, a mountain biker, a dentist, a ice cream truck driver, this same technique would apply. We just make sure that we're optimizing things around our locations and our targeted keywords, incorporating that into our text. You get the idea. I would go through and grab some different variations. So I would go in here. First, I would start with a title up here. So I go heading one. Heading one in Google's eyes is the most important, heading two is second most important, and the subheadings are less important and text the least important of all. So make sure you know that you want to put your keywords into your heading tags, especially your heading one tag. Technically with SEO, you only want one heading one tag in the entire page, and then the rest would be heading two, three, four, etc. So I would start off by basically repeating my title. I can exactly copy it. That's what I like to do because it's easy. Or you can go ahead and make a variation of it. So it could be grist mill wedding, never matter, Curtis and Ashley. And then I would have a subheading underneath this just to insert my keyword again. And I would do gorgeous photos on the lake, never matter. Pretend my spelling is right with grist mill wedding reception and it was outdoors so I will in insert that as well. Perfect. So that would be my heading two tag. Then I would go through and I would add some more text. So there's another issue with this, this text and it's there's not enough. There's not much going on here. The more text we have, the more keywords we can insert, the more Google has to go on for what the wedding was about or what your post is about. So I would go through in here and I would say they were the absolute bomb. We had a blast capturing their wedding at Gristmill in Naramata and couldn't help but feel a little sad when it was all over we had to say goodbye. Naramata is such a beautiful place and we love filming and photographing weddings in the Similkamine, pretend I'm spelling right, Valley slash Okanagan region. It's so beautiful with all the lakeside wedding photography locations and different outdoor reception venues. Our favorite part of this grist mill wedding was the outdoor reception and nighttime dance by candlelight. 
So I would go on and I would do that sort of a thing. So you see that I've got several different keywords going on here. We've got gristmill in Naramata, we've got Naramata, we've got the Similkameen Valley, which is the larger area, Okanagan region, lakeside wedding photography. So I would go through and you don't want to make it spammy or stupid. You want it to make sense because obviously brides potentially are going to be reading this. And we would go through and just add some text. Then I would probably at the bottom, Remember our earlier video where we looked at Adrian photographers, how they had listed their venues? That's a great way to insert keywords in an organic way. So I would go locations and venues, and I would list out my venue, my locations, my details, specifics, any vendors, and I would probably have their websites in here as well, and a little bit of information. So one thing that you can do that's really quick is this wedding was at Grist Mill, so I would just go Grist Mill Naramata. Dun, da, da, da. And typically, these guys will have some information on their website. Grismill is a little bit smaller, so it's not going to be quite the same. Um, but somewhere that has wedding-specific information is best. And then I would just copy that. And I would say that the location and venue was uh, Grismill Wedding Ceremony and Reception. And then I would put their website. More from the Grismill website. And I would just paste that little bit of information that they've got. And that just gives me more text and more relevance in the eyes of Google to do with this gristmill. And I would also either bold or heading tag each of these venues and keywords within this list. That will just tell Google, okay, these are what this post is in reference to. So I would do that and then my text would be much further along. The next thing that I am going to look at is all of my images. So you can see here that as I pull this up, it shows a caption, an alt text, a title attribute. And if I were in the old version of WordPress, I think they might have changed this for now. Or maybe it's because I'm in a gallery. Let's see. If I were to actually save this image, you'll see that I've titled it Curtis Ashley Sneak Peek 1, which is really not very helpful for Google because they have no idea what Curtis Ashley Sneak Peek 1 is. Whereas if I had titled it something like Naramata Wedding Photo Shoot on Johnson Lake, then they would know exactly what this photo was of and I would have so much better chance of showing up in Google search. So I'm going to go through with all of my images and I'm going to add some information. So I would put Gris Mill Wedding in Naramata with photo shoot on the lake in the forest. And I don't remember the actual specific name of this lake, but I would make sure to look that up and add that in here. So then I would go update and alt text, what I just added in there, doesn't actually show up on your post. So this isn't going to show up anywhere above or below the image. It's just going to be tagged within that image. So when Google looks at it and looks at the code behind it, because they don't see this picture, they just see the code, they'll see this text that says, oh, this is what this is about. So you don't necessarily want to put text in here that has nothing to do with the image. I wouldn't, for instance, put motorcycle derby and expect that this would rank and show up properly because that would just mess with Google and they can see through that, especially um, the smarter and smarter their algorithms are getting. So try and keep it literal, but you can also include your keywords in there as well. So I go through and I do that. Then I go through my next image and I do the same thing because this one's also on the lake and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Another easier way to do this in WordPress is just go up to your add media button and you can see all of the recent media that I've added. I can go through and quickly access. So here's my image title. So I would change the title as well. So I put Gris Mill Wedding Reception and Ceremony. And I would go ahead and go over and switch the title tag. Now, obviously, this is going to be a lot easier for you if you just rename your photos before uploading them to your website. So you can rename your images before you post them, or you can go through and you can just do this. So normally, you would decide what you want your particular post to rank for, what your keyword is going to be, and title your image around that. So you might do Chris Mill Wedding, Curtis and Ashley, and then one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So going through here, I'm just going to modify those. And for the sake of brevity, we are going to skip doing the rest. But I'd go through and I'd also do my alt text for each one. So I would do wedding photo shoot on the lake near Gris Mill in Naramata. Right? And then I would do the same thing, copy over, edit it where necessary. So you could also do bride um, is being kissed by groom and then 
wedding near gristmill in Naramata. Okay, so you get the point. That is how you insert alt text. Now, description sometimes will show up in your actual post, so I normally leave that blank as well as caption. Alt text and title is all you really need to worry about. Then I would go ahead and just go exit out of that. It will save these changes automatically. And so I've optimized my images. Now, next, what haven't we done? We've talked about URL, and that can be set in WordPress right at the very top here. So you see how it's currently set to sneak peek Curtis and Ashley. I would change it to something like this. Wedding, Chris Mill, Naramata. Because really, the URL, the bride and groom are not going to get upset that their URL doesn't have their names in it. That's just not a big deal to them. They're probably not even going to notice. And it's going to be way better for SEO to do it that way. Great. Uh, what else? Heading tags, we've talked about and taken care of those. Content topic, well, we're going to disperse that throughout our text. Post tags are found down here. And these are probably the least important of all of what we're going to be doing today because Google knows that people tend to stuff everything they can think of into these tags. And so they're not really perceived to be as relevant, but I still make sure to do them. So I would put Chris Mill, comma, Chris Mill, Naramata. Naramata wedding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I go through and I'd add all of my tags right there. Moving on, we have our keywords and variations, which we talked about inserting organically throughout our post. Keyword frequency, which again, that the more text you have, the more times it can show up. Image alt tags, we did that. Post title, we have done that and meta description. That is the last part we're going to do. And in order to do this in WordPress, you're going to want to add a plugin. So we're going to go down to add new, you know, open that in a new tab. And we're looking for Yoast. Now this plugin is absolutely amazing because not only do they let you edit and insert all those little descriptions and tags, they also take a look at your page and rate it, show you kind of what you can change, what you can tweak, what could be better, what needs work. And so it's very, very important that you install this plugin if you're using WordPress. If you're not using WordPress and you're kind of like, well, how does this apply to me? How do I use it? You can just Google how to insert these tags and descriptions, etc., with your particular platform. So for uh, Square, for instance, you can go Squarespace, you can go over to your advanced SEO settings and you can do that for pages and for your overall website. Now I will tell you that of all of the website platforms, WordPress simply gives you the most options when it comes to customizing this stuff and editing it. It's also a little bit hard to figure out and learn it first, so you kind of have a trade-off. It's a bit more of a learning curve, but there's also more capabilities in the end. So anyways, we're going to go to add plugins, add Yoast SEO, and once that is done, you will have something like this in the bottom of your page. So you can actually see exactly what your little listing post is going to look like once it shows up on Google search. So we've got our title here, then we have our website with our URL showing up, and then we have our meta description, which we can update. So what I normally do is because I put a lot of time into the first couple of sentences here, I will typically just grab the first couple sentences and put that as my description. But mainly what you want is to make sure that your SEO keyword is in there, whatever keyword you're targeting, as well as a variation of that keyword if possible. So Grismill Wedding to Naramata, um, and then I'm just going to get rid of that. Gorgeous photos on the lake in Naramata with outdoors, outdoor reception at Grismill. Actually, let's do outdoor ceremony and reception at Grismill near Carameos. So that's just a near neighboring city. Great, so that would be my post description. And now I'm going to enter my key phrase, which is gristmill, let's say, or gristmill wedding. And you can see that this little happy face is not 100% happy. So it's got some reasons. No internal links appear on the page. Uh, key phrase dent density is only 2.9%. Oh, actually, it's over the advised maximum. So I've repeated it too many times. It was found four times. So don't over-optimize. That is one good thing to mention. You do not want Google to look at your website and go, oh, this is a little suspicious. This isn't actually relevant. They're just inserting these keywords so that they trick me. You don't want to try and trick Google. You just want to optimize for Google. Does that make sense? So text length, the text is only 139 words. They want at least 300. So I would go on and I would add some to that. And the title is wider than the view viewable limit. So I could make my title shorter. So a few things that we could go ahead and fix. And then this would turn to green and our 
page would be pretty much optimized. So we've gone through, we've edited our URL, heading tags, content topic, post tags, keywords, keywords, frequency, image alt tags, post title, and metadata description. Obviously, there is lots to do. And so your action items, if you choose to accept it, which I certainly hope you do if you want to rank, is to go through all of your pages, all of your posts, and you're going to have to decide what you want each page or post to rank for. And then you need to do all of this. You're going to edit your text to include your keywords in it. You're going to go ahead and add your H1 tags or H2 tags, edit your image alt text, make sure you're inserting different tags. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is you can make sure to assign a category to your post and that will help with SEO a little bit. It's kind of subjective. Google's a little bit secretive about what they actually rank and don't rank. So I make sure to put all of my posts into a category that lines up with what that particular post is about. So for instance, this would be probably Kelowna Wedding Photography is the closest location. And maybe wedding venues I could check, perhaps if I had more venue pictures. For now, we'll just go with Kelowna Wedding Photography. And then I would go publish. And we're good. So your assignment obviously is to go through, edit each of your posts, your pages, and to optimize the content that is already there. That is the easiest thing that you can do to start ranking today. Without having to create a whole ton of new content, you can just go through and update what is already there. Now, two final things we're gonna talk about. One is your featured image. That is the image that pops up on your blog or showcases whenever you are sharing your URL on Facebook, that sort of a thing. So you wanna make sure to select a featured image and also that that featured image especially is optimized with alt text. So that's important. Uh, so I'm going to go through and let's say that I like this image the most. I'm just going to hit set and update. And the last thing that we do need to talk about is optimizing your home page. So I'm actually going to do that in a separate video because there are a few specific things that only apply to that. In the meantime, go ahead and update your posts, get started with that SEO optimization. Okay.